Hello everyone, glad to have you back. This month's video is once again focusing on some F-Zero lore, and this time it is about the one thing present in every single game, and well, everything related to F-Zero to be honest. This video is all about the F-Zero machines and the in-universe lore about how they work and my own theories and comparison to technology we have today. Before I get into the main topic, a little information, at the end of this video will be some updates mainly for the channel and how this is going to continue. There will be changes, but more on that later. Now, let's get into the main video. Rather surprisingly, there actually isn't that much lore and information about the inner workings of an F-Zero machine, neither in the games nor the anime, so that's a bit limiting, but I think there is enough for me to work with. Like many other lore topics in F-Zero, there are differences between the main canon and the anime timeline, and like in previous videos, my own theories will be present here. The only real information we have comes from the manuals. The original SNES manual describes the machines use super magnetic technology to hover over the ground. All of all these technologies mentioned in the games and anime, this seems rather realistic. It is very possible to make things float using magnets. I mean, just look at this. The floating over the ground and it can go at over 600 km per hour, which is faster than the machines in F-Zero and maximum velocity, and it's something we have today. I mean, we have cars that go faster than the original F-Zero machines, and they don't need to hover. Also, the acceleration isn't as unrealistic as the ones in the later games. If it weren't for the fact that this approach was retconned in GX, I would consider this to be quite possible. Yes, technically the track would have to be made out of magnets, and well, I'm a scientist, but this wouldn't be possible, right? It also wouldn't really explain these rough patches, although maybe they are different magnets or just some other obstacle which the machines touch to slow down. And how would eyes work? Oh well, now that I think about it, this approach might give us more obstacles than solutions. Let's move on to GX's approach and see if that's more realistic. GX's manual mentions that the machines use a G diffuser system. The G probably stands for gravity. Why? Because that's what it's called in the Star Fox universe, and it obviously does something with gravity too. Maybe it's the same thing, especially with that one ending and G0, remember that? Maybe it's the same universe. A topic for another time. Anyway, reading through the very in-depth description of the Star Fox G diffuser, I kinda see the similarities to F0 and well. Some things kind of start to make sense now. For example, the G diffuser in Star Fox also protects the R rings from enemy fire by basically creating a force field around the ship. This could be one explanation to how F0 machines manage to be so durable. Just consider this: the machines are crashing into each other at speeds above 1,000 km per hour. In reality, nothing but small pieces should remain after such a collision. But in game. Nothing. Maybe the cheat diffuser in F-Zero also protects the pilot from impacts and such, cause just as with other machines, you can crash into wall at high speeds and you only lose some energy. Anyway, I'm getting a bit off topic here. Basically, Star Fox and F-Zero managed to have some similarities, not only with the name, but also some of the functionality of the cheat diffuser. But how does it work now? How are F-Zero machines able to just hover and go upside down without being affected by gravity? Basically, how does an F-Zero machine know what the ground is? There isn't really an in-universe explanation. In the main can, at least. You see, this is where the anime comes in. Just before I show this clip, I'm gonna warn you. I don't like it. That may be my least favorite explanation, but that's all we got. F-Zero machine is the その this just seems overly complicated and maybe it's just my stupid little brain, but if the machine always wants the center of the planet to be below it, wouldn't that mean when it goes upside down that it would just fall off the track and fall until it reaches the surface again where it can hover? What does the machine know when it's upside down? I don't really know. I really do not. But what I know is that I personally dislike this idea, but it's all we got. Also, outer space exists. 
We also see have similar scenes travel in space, so that's just a weird explanation that doesn't seem correct in my eyes. And please, don't even get me started on all this Rectomite stuff, it's literally the one thing I dislike the most about the entire anime. Maybe a topic for another video if that's something you're interested in. My theory is just that there is some kind of gravity manipulation going on, because the machines simply seem like they aren't affected in the same way as things that we know from our world. For example, an FCM machine does not accelerate when going down. It can come to a halt at a 90 degree drop, but it does behave like you expect when you're falling off the track, so maybe it's even a combination of something inside the track and maybe that gives us this effect. I mean, the machines only stick to the track. They don't stick to other machines, buildings or even a cliff. So maybe there is something in the roads and tracks after all. But then there is this and the stuff in the anime and it all just falls apart again. There really is no definitive answer and that kinda annoys me, but what you gonna do? F-Zero has never really been too in-depth about how machines work in general. Next up is the topic of speed and I can't believe that for the second time now I'm making an F-Zero video and I'm researching real world planes. Those two topics just seem to go hand in hand sometimes. First, we gotta talk about acceleration though. Yeah, it seems a bit unrealistic. Compared to cars, the fastest hypercars accelerate from 0 to 100 in 2 seconds. Military jets are probably faster, but finding information on that was too difficult since, as you can guess, it doesn't really matter. As a comparison, only holding down A and GX, the Astro Robin on max acceleration manages to go from 0 to 600 in 1 second. If the G-Diffuser isn't somehow protecting our pilots from the G-forces generated by the acceleration, Jack Levin would feel a staggering 16.97 Gs during this one second of acceleration, considering every application has Earth's gravity, of course. So it is safe to assume that G-Diffuser does something to protect the pilots. The forces a racer would experience during a collision would be even stronger, for example, decelerating from 1000 to 0 km per hour within a second by crashing into all would result in negative 28.3 Gs, which once again isn't very realistic. But that's not really the point, it's just a real world comparison and the G diffuser is probably doing something. In conclusion, the G-Diffuser, if it works like the one in Star Fox, may not only make the machines hover, but it also protects the pilots from the forces they would feel. Or maybe there is another part in the machine that isn't mentioned anywhere. Speed is surprisingly the most realistic thing the F-Zero machines have, because, well, they aren't really fast. I mean, yeah, they are fast racing machines, but if you look at military jets, F-Zero machines seem rather slow. Yeah, F-Zero machines are smaller and more futuristic, of course, but I just want to point out here, 1000 km per hour is not really that fast if you think about it. The rest of the things seem to be pretty self-explanatory. It's obvious how the machines steer, most do that like planes do, Others probably just shift their weight or point their thrusters in another direction. The booster and energy meter explains itself with the G diffuser approach. It only has limited charge and it can use the charge to boost itself to generate more power and when the charge depletes it can't protect the machine anymore so that results in it crashing and exploding. Once again, Star Fox's approach makes a lot of sense for F-Zero. Sadly, there really isn't much more information out there. Well, most of what I talked about was my own theory anyway, so take everything I said with a grain of salt. It's just one guy's theories and opinions. Why is it not more? I don't know. Maybe it's just because Nintendo simply didn't put too much thought into it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I would love to go more in depth with that topic, but my research resulted in nothing. Only the manuals mention anything about the technology. We have this from X, but it's just an image and this doesn't tell us anything. Like I explained, there is this crossover thing with Star Fox and the G-Diffuser which kinda seems to be the same or at least a similar thing and that's all we have. If I had to make an F-Zero video and my research was done in a different franchise. Anyway, I at least hope you found this somewhat interesting. I had fun coming up with real world comparisons and just seeing if F-Zero is realistic. But for the most part, it really isn't, but that's nice as well. Coming up is a personal update. If you're not into that, then I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Bye. So, I guess since you're still watching, you care to some degree, and I appreciate that. I want to use the next few minutes to just tell you a little bit about the future of this channel. Since I started making these kinds of videos, I have been uploading on a regular schedule, originally every two weeks, now every month, with an additional short every week. 
when I started this schedule, I had a lot more free time than today. I think you can already guess what this is gonna be about. Up until recently, I had a lot of free time which enabled me to do all these different things, but that has changed. As you can imagine, I cannot spend my entire free time doing just one thing. There are other things I'm committed to, like spending time with my friends, playing WoW or Diablo 4 or I don't know, Advance Wars or something, or just spending time not gaming. As you can imagine, there are things which are just more important to me than this little side project. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love doing this, but things gotta change. There have been times in the last few months where I have rushed my work here, the prime example being my last video. I admit my research was not good and I hope this video's research was better. I missed things that I should have known about and more or less presented misinformation, which will be corrected in an upcoming video. In the meantime, I recommend you to read AKC12's comments and documents instead of watching my video, to be honest. This could have been avoided if I hadn't set an arbitrary limit of uploading on the 17th of every month. I literally finished that video on the same day I uploaded it, and well, it shows. And that simply isn't what I enjoy. The videos I enjoyed a lot more are these, which are all ones I had a lot more time to work on, and I just got all the details right. Others, not so much. Like I said in the past, I have no problem admitting that I made a mistake, and I made quite a few of my videos so far, so I'm sorry about that. It's all on me. So, what's the solution? Well, basically, I need more time. I've been considering moving my schedule of regular videos and just upload them when they are done, and when I'm at least 90% happy with them. I know very well that uploading on an irregular basis is going to hurt the channel a lot, but I'm willing to take that small hit in favor of uploading things that I'm personally happier with. I hope you understand, but since you are here so far into the personal update, I think you do. You wouldn't be here if you wouldn't care. I appreciate that. I, I really do. But now, I said everything I wanted to say. I hope you are still gonna be here the next time I upload a video, whenever that is gonna be. Until then, have a good one. And for real this time, bye.